Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. It is, what is it? It's Monday. Happy Monday. I know Monday's a hard day uh, to get going. Uh, excuse my shirtless video for some of you who might be offended. Uh, but I just got home from my long day uh, that now includes a youth class, which some of you may have watched live today. So because of that, my day, my workout, uh, I can't get my workout in until after my morning slate of classes. So 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. boot camps, 10.45 youth class, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. is my corporate account, one of my corporate accounts. So uh, about 1.30 in the summer is when I start my workout. So uh, I'm first of all thankful and, that I, and I thank God that I'm able to work out at 47 almost. Uh, I thank God that I have a gym that I own or that I lease, but it's my company uh, and I have people to train, right? I'm thankful I have a wife and kids who support me. Two kids of which, of which waited for me uh, for four hours before we left patiently. So I'm thankful for that. So I'm home now, it's almost five o'clock and I have not eaten yet, right? So I'm gonna give you guys a quick pointer again about what I do, right? About what I do. So if you scroll through my timeline, you will never see anything on my timeline, either here or Instagram, where you see me talking about how I'm back on the grind or I'm back on the workouts or I'm back on my diet. No, because from day one, I approached it the right way. Right, Mikey? I approached it the right way. So from day one, I made sure that I, I, I created habits that were sustainable. And that's the key, right? So too many of us go on these diets and these, and these quick fix workouts that don't enable us to, to sustain it because we don't even go into it expecting su to sustain it. There are people who go on diets never expecting to continue it, right? They're just trying to lose weight for Hawaii, or, or their, their, their uh, reunion or whatever, or some challenge, right? So what I did, what I do, is I, is I made sure that I changed my habits, right? So I read about it, I researched it, um, I tried different things for the last you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and what I realized is the best way to, to, to change your habits, the best way to maintain a lifestyle of fitness is to make sure that you're putting your body in the best position and, and closest to, thank you, Mikey, and closest to what it was meant to do, right? So it's akin to having a Porsche your whole life, having a Porsche or some high-powered car and not knowing it's high-powered. So you're using this Porsche to, to lug stuff around, right? To take stuff to storage, to pull stuff in the, in, in the, in the field, right? Doing all this stuff with a Porsche not realizing that it's meant to be high powered on the freeway. So our bodies are meant to run a certain way, but because of the advent of technology, because of, of, of industrialization, because of commercialization, because of our, of, of our advanced cultures, we have moved away from what our bodies were meant to be and our bodies have not caught up to that, right? So in terms of fitness and health and eating, all I did basically was realize what the body's meant to do, and then do that. It's simple, and then do that. So the, our bodies are not meant to eat all day, believe it or not, right? So I was one of those guys who was a proponent of small meals, right? Eat every few hours, eat small meals, make sure your, 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 your plate has a, has a combination of protein and carbs and healthy fats, right? I was part of that, of that thought process, of, of, the, of that theology. The truth is that is, that is because most of us are dependent upon sugar for our main source of fuel. So because of that, when we eat sugary meals, our body either uses that immediately or it gets rid of and stores what it's not using. That means your body at some point in the next 20, 30 minutes after eating food with high glucose content needs more glucose to function. That's why you go up and down with your energy when you have high carbs as part of your diet. So what the keto diet does is, is get you to a point where you can eliminate that, 
and you get your body to produce what's called ketones and have a, red, a readily available, sustainable fuel, right? So, so ketone gets you in the state where your body's continually to create fuel from fat storage, which is what you want. The problem is that's hard to do. It's hard to sustain. I don't know anybody, anybody, and if somebody can, can, can claim me wrong, please ping me. I don't know anybody that started keto and stayed on it forever. Nobody. If they did, they lived somewhere by themselves. They're not married, no kids, no friends, no work, no social life, and they live in the woods somewhere because our lives are surrounded by people who aren't on keto. Kids, spouses, friends. So it's hard to stay on it. So what I did was I didn't even try it. I've never tried to go no sugar, ever. I like cookies too much. I'll get to that. Right? What I did do was I understood that our bodies are not meant to eat all day long. So what I did and what I do and what I propose is that you guys begin to understand that our bodies are not meant to eat 18 hours or 16 hours or 17 hours. Right? Most of us, most of us use this, this timeline. We eat for about 16 hours and then we fast or don't eat for about 8 hours. Right, think about it. So when you wake up in the morning, 6, 7, 8 a.m., you probably eat something relatively soon after waking up. Right? Then you go to work, you eat, you know, throughout the day, you come home, you eat, sit on the couch, and then you probably have something to eat close to bedtime. Right? So if you sleep for about eight hours, that means you're only not eating when you're when you're sleeping. You're only not eating for about eight hours. So you're eating in a window of 16 hours and then not eating or fasting in a window of eight. That is not how our ancestors lived. That is not how the body evolved, right? So for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, our bodies did the opposite of that, right? Our bodies ate for about eight hours and then did not eat for about 16 hours. Think about it, right? When you, with your ancestors, your great, great grandfather, when he woke up, he had to do what? Go to the refrigerator? Nope. Go to Starbucks? Nope. He had to go find, hunt, or gather his food. Right? That meant he probably woke up with the sunlight, no alarm clock. His body woke him up. Sunlight, maybe some animals woke him up, right? He got cold. So he woke up around, around when the sun came up and he had to go find food, walk, hunt, tackle. So that meant he had to work out, right? Do a morning boot camp before eating. So many of you say, I can't work out in the morning. Well, guess what? For most of our human existence, we had to work out in the morning, right? Then he probably ate, never ate to full, never ate till he was full ever or seldom, right? Because you wouldn't kill more food than you had to, right? You couldn't really carry extra food, just, just, just to have extra. So you normally got gathered, hunted, got what you needed to eat. And then when you were full, you didn't eat extra. You didn't sit back on the couch, right? You ate when you were, until you were satiated, until you were full, right? So we ate for purpose. Now we eat for pleasure most of the time. So we ate, right, once, twice a day maybe, right? And then when the sun went down, we were done eating, Right? There was no late night television, there was no microwave, there was no, 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 no processed food in the package to eat. So you, when, 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 the, when the sun went down at the latest, that was your last meal. Right? So your window was, of eating was about eight hours right? from, from sun up to sun down, if that. And then your fasting period, your fasting period was about 14, 15, 16, 17 hours at least, if not days sometimes. Right. So when I realized that, I said, OK, I'm going to try to move my body to the same premise, to the same to the same structure. Now, we want to look different than our ancestors. We want to build muscle, have abs, have glutes. So we're trying to create a body and tweak it the way we want. So we have to do different things than just eat and not eat. I get that. And I'll get into that. So I get that. But at the foundation of the changes you need to make, we need to make sure that we understand the body's not meant to eat all day long. Right, so what do I do? I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be quick and simple. I don't eat all day long, right? I don't eat until at least three o'clock, sometimes longer. Today, it's, it's five o'clock, I have not eaten yet. What I did do, right, was give my body instant fuel in the morning, right? So it's not a sales pitch, but I give myself 
exogenous ketones in the morning. Exogenous ketones means outside of the body, right? Endogenous ketones are what your body creates when it burns body fat, right? We still want to do that, right? But we want to make the transition easy. So when you give your body instant fuel, like keto OS, now you're not hungry, right? Now you're not, now you're not physically in need of, of, of fuel. Your body has fuel. So when you wake up, you're not craving carbohydrates. You're not craving bread. You're not craving cereal. You might still want it, but that's a, a habit. But we know that, we, that, that the habit that we have is a habit now, right? Once you know it's a habit, you can fight the habit. There's a great book called The Power of Habit that everyone should read. But once you realize it's not physical, it's a matter of habit. It's a matter of doing things over and over again. It's a matter of when I pass by Starbucks, I want to go by there naturally. It's a matter of when I come down, I go right to the cupboard automatically, right? So once you realize it's just a habit, right, and not physically uh, a, a need, now you can fight that, right? That's step one. So I do that first thing every single morning. I give my body instant fuel, right? I sell this. If you're interested, ping me. I, I, I provide the link, right? Then to make sure my body can do two things, make sure I'm satiated throughout the day. And don't get hungry because that runs out too. Just like, just like the donut runs out, the ketones run out as well. My body will use that up as well. So I want to last. So now my next bridge is what? Y'all have seen this video. My next bridge is called Bulletproof Coffee, right? Just coffee, right? But what I add to it is I add some MCT oil, right? That's a, fat, a fast converting fat that your body can use quickly, right? Then I give my body some, some fat, some dietary fat, heavy whipping cream, Right, that makes the, the coffee I drink thick and satiating and fills me up so I don't get hungry. Right? I don't I don't feel the need to, to, to enter carbs into my body. And then to juice it up, make it taste good, I give it a little a little creamer, but I go sugar free, not fat free. Right? So you're teaching your body, you're making your body full, and you're teaching your body to use dietary fat for fuel. Right? And then it can use body fat for fuel more easily. All right, so I do that from, from 4 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or, or, or around 6 a.m. on Tuesday and Thursday. I'll do the ketones. I'll do the bulletproof coffee for the next several hours. And then when I work out, what do I do, guys? I work out. I make sure my body has what it needs right, without giving it food. So I go amino acids, for sure, amino acids, right? My new sponsor, DotFit. And now, for the last few months, I've been doing creatine. You don't have to do creatine, but it gives your muscles... Um, creatine in the muscle to make you be able to push more weights around. If you're trying to get big and strong, right, adding creatine to your muscle when you're working out helps you push around weights longer and stronger, thereby breaking down more muscle tissue that you can then repair and build back larger. So every morning I do that. I do the ketones, I do the bulletproof coffee, and then if I'm working out, I'll do creatine and, and the, the amino acids even if I don't work out, I'll at least do amino acids, right? What are amino acids? A refresher. Amino acids are the byproduct of protein. So you can get amino acids in your body by eating steak, eating chicken, eating, eating pork, eating sources of protein, but your body has to break that down. That means it's longer to get into your bloodstream, and that means it also requires you to eat other calories, right? When you drink amino acids, it's right to your bloodstream, right to your muscles, and you're not having to consume the extra calories that come when you eat protein, right? So I do that every single day, every single day. Ketones, amino acids, bulletproof coffee, right? What that means is I'm able to eat in shorter windows, right? If I eat in shorter windows and fast longer. Now, what does that mean in terms of a long-term strategy? What that means is we have a glycogen tank, right? We have, a, and I call it the G tank. That's Bobby's term, right? That is the aggregate of your bloodstream glucose. So when you eat carbs, your body breaks down carbohydrates into what's called glucose, right? That's, that, that's most of us, most of our primary source of fuel, all right? So it's, it's the, the G tank is the aggregate of the bloodstream's glucose, and then what your body's not using in terms of glucose, it will store it in either your muscles or your liver, right? So that's called glycogen. Glycogen is just stored glucose, right? So we all have a certain reservoir capacity to store glycogen, 
right? That's called the G tank. If you imagine this is, is your tank, right? Some are bigger than others, right? If you have a lot of muscles, you can store more glycogen without fat storage, right? So what this strategy does, the biggest part of why this strategy works is that it keeps your level of glycogen low because you're eating less. And then when you, when, you, when you piggyback that with good workouts that get rid of glycogen, that's why I'm a big proponent about doing heavy lifting and explosive movements and sprinting and jumping as opposed to steady state cardio. It has its place, but for the most part, you're gonna get rid of glycogen more effectively when you do powerful, excuse me, powerful, explosive, heavy stuff, right? And as you get stronger, you're able to do more of that. That's why I say you can't, guys, you can't go off for two, three weeks without working out. You're trying to build a, build a base of fitness so that you can go into a gym and pump out a 45 minute workout because you're in shape. Right? If you can't get rid of the fuel because you're out of shape or tired or hurt, your body doesn't care. If you can't do what it takes to get rid of the fuel, your body's gonna keep that fuel. So now we have two parts of the strategy. You're putting in less fuel, right, by minimizing your window and minimizing carbs, and then you're building a, a, a foundation of, of fitness that allows you to empty out the glycogen regularly. So all you have to do really is plan every week to where some days you're empty of glycogen, right? Where your body has no glycogen. I try to get there by Wednesday or Thursday because usually the weekend I fill up, right? But what you want to do is when you come off the weekend, now I'm in shape. I can bump out, pump out a thousand rep of work to failure workout that I did today, a thousand reps of legs, back, and chest, right? Now my window of not eating is extended. Now I'm going to 515 not eating, Right? But still having fuel because I got ketones, I got my bulletproof coffee, I got my amino acids, I'm good to go. But no carbs. So I'm emptying out my glycogen. I lost four pounds today, just watering glycogen. Right? Because I'm in shape. Now, if I was in shape, I couldn't do that hard workout. If I, didn't, if I hadn't built the habits up or didn't want to build the habits up of, of extending my fasting window, I couldn't do that. But now every week I can do that. So now I can, I can, I can go a day or two limited or no carbs, right? Extend my fasting window, do my, do my stages, right? My ketones, my amino acids, my bulletproof coffee, right? Get my workouts in, make sure they're hard, right? Make sure they're, they're challenging, explosive, not just ch checking the box off that I worked out today. So what? If it ain't hard and explosive, you ain't did anything, all right? So now, by, if I do that by Wednesday, Thursday, by 4th of July, my tank is empty, Right? Hopefully, I can have some, some, some buffer where I can be empty for a day or two, let my body convert body fat into energy. Right? But even at the worst case scenario, now I empty it out. Now I can go to the, the, the 4th of July barbecue. I can have hamburgers. I can have bread, whatever I want. I can have cookies if I want without no risk of fat storage. Will I gain weight? Probably. But it's just water and glycogen. Who cares? Right? What I want to do. Is, is, is tell you guys that, that the key is changing your habits. Understand, not lifestyle, it's just understanding what your body is. You have a Porsche. You have a high-powered motor vehicle called your, that, that is your body, and you're using it to do crap with, to, 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 to haul around crap to the dump, basically. Right? You're using your vehicle to do dumb stuff. Right? When it should be doing powerful stuff. So treat it with respect. Right? So now when you, when you do that, you change your strategy. You change your habits. Can you go out and have fun still? Of course. But you have a plan for it and you can't do it all the time. Right? I had, cook I had a whole roll of cookies damn near this weekend. A whole roll of this. We made it for the family. I ate like most of them. Right? So I gained like four or five pounds over the weekend. Right? But it's all glycogen and water. And then I turn around, and now, to now, now today, tomorrow, probably Wednesday, I'm going to knock it down to no carbs, extend my fasting window. Right, I'm still going to eat. Right, today I got, a, I got a, I got, what is this? I got a, a wrap. Oops. I got a wrap from Togo's. Right? Finished wrap. It's, a, it's an Asian wrap, so it's chicken. But it ain't, it ain't carb-free. It ain't, it ain't no carbs. So messy now. Uh, but I still eat. But I don't eat all day. I eat in small windows. Right? So now, so now I don't gain fat. Okay? So if you guys want help, 
if you want to change your, 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 not only your lifestyle, change your strategy, change your habits, we can do a 30-day window. I can help you. If you really want to be different, not just, not, just, not just act different and do different. If you really want to be different, I can help you. In 30 days, we can change based on whatever you do, based on where you work, what your schedule is, what your kid's schedule is. I can help you fit what I do into your schedule if you want. Right, so if you're interested, I can help you for 30 days. We can do, you know, the first 10 people I'll give a discount to. Um, but it ain't that hard, guys. I still eat. I still have fun. I work out three or four times a week. That's it. I don't do any cardio. Not no real cardio. I don't run. I don't bike. My knees are fine. I'm 47 years old almost. I don't have bad knees. I don't have a bad back. Because I simplified it. It's simple. So if you want help, guys, reach out to me. I'm going to eat this wrap, watch some television, um, and then I don't know what's going on tonight. My kids probably got something going on. All right, so have a great day. Uh, if I don't talk to you guys before the 4th, which I will, have a great 4th. I love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.